there are so many questions that I wanted to ask, uh, you know, the scientists, which I really don't have answer, because artists always work from intuition. They don't use as much rational part of the brain. The ideas come like a, some kind of a, a mirage, like a three-dimensional, you know, the, the hologram image in the space. We can call inspiration, we can call state of mind, we can call ecstasy, we can call so many different things. And I'm always interested in which part of the brain we are using it. What is this all about? But before all that, I would like to start with a very simple question because uh, as a poll start all event, talking about weight or how high is the space. So my simple question, how much weigh the brain? How much does it yeah, weigh? Yeah, how much weigh the brain? What is it, the weight of this brain? 1,200 grams. How much? 1,200 grams. Three pounds. It's always the same. Are the differences, the, no, let's no, say, no, it, it, big people or fat people have more brains no. or less brains or there's always the same brain fat, weight, well, never, fat, never matter what? Fat people have fatter bodies, but not fatter brains. So the brain is always the same. That's incredibly interesting. Well, within limits. So, uh, you know, you, you cannot uh, imagine that we all have exactly the same number of grams, the same way that we don't have the same weight or the same height or anything like that. So there are small variations, but there is a range that is considered normal. Uh, and, you know, if you go to uh, the Merchant of Venice, Shakespeare, talks through uh, Shylock uh, about three pounds of flesh. You can actually imagine, you know, in terms of an analogy, you could imagine somebody who is actually drafting all these pictures. Pictures of sound, pictures of, of uh, envision. If I touch this chair, I will make a map of the, of the shape of the, the arm of the chair, but also of the texture of the wood. Can you say that also this deal with consciousness? We are con conscious about this chair. We are conscious about me being there. And then again, you know, what is consciousness? That's something that's, that... That's still another layer. The, yeah. yeah, so that, that, that's still another layer. So, you know, you, know, you could perfectly well create all these maps. And what it would do is generate a flowing of images because if each neural map once it is apprehended in consciousness, becomes an image. Consciousness is not merely about having maps and images. It's about having felt maps and images. It's not just that you're seeing something. You feel that you see something. And that feeling is an, is an obligate accompaniment of perception that is in consciousness. And then, in the end, you're going to add a few more tricks and let me just outline two or three for you. One is perspective. For example, I am conscious of you being here, I am conscious of the audience there, but that consciousness has to do with the fact that I am perceiving the, the audience and you in a certain perspective, which happens to be the perspective of my eyes in my head. There is, is imagine that you had a camera and the camera is now panned toward you and I am perceiving in my perspective. Um, you are perceiving me in a completely different perspective. And that's one of the reasons why you know that you have a mind that is conscious, and I know that I have a mind, and your mind is yours, my, my mind is mine. Not only that, you also have a, an inevitable sense of ownership. That is part of consciousness. You know that it is your own mind, not the mind of the person that is sitting in the first row. And it's when you put together all that information that you really become aware in the true sense of the surrounding world and of your own organism. So the most lapidary and simple definition of consciousness would be the ability to be aware of one's own organism and of the surround of that organism in a felt way.